I don't even know what to call this video. There's just been a lot of crazy stories that have gone down this last week. And since I've been recovering from an unspecified illness, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to make a video talking about it. Welcome to the best news network for people who hate the media. I'm Brian Phillips, and you're watching the Goddamn News! Life is full of surprises, and this first story is surprising to no one. Concord, the biggest flop in video game history, has officially shut down. Firewalk Studios, the developer behind the abomination, went bust, and with that, Sony has officially closed the doors on Concord to the dismay of absolutely no one. This also shut down all the rumors about Concord getting a second win after scouts noticed that the game had been receiving regular updates on Steam despite it being offline for over a month. No matter how much Sony tried to play doctor, some things are just a lost cause. But we at GDN aren't going to tell Sony how to live their life, so if they truly believed keeping Concord on life support was a good decision, then who am I to argue with them? Maybe Concord was a good game. And maybe Morbius wasn't a bad movie. I don't think so. Google is being sued for 2.5 decillion dollars. A number I'm sure very few of you knew existed. That's more than a trillion dollars. More than a gazillion dollars. This is a 2.5 decillion dollar lawsuit. To put into perspective how much money Google is being sued for, here's a decillion. That's 33 zeros you're looking at. And as you can see, a trillion doesn't even make a dent. Following that, the global GDP is estimated to be only 100 trillion. And of that, the total estimated value of the entire fucking planet is approximately 13.7 quadrillion dollars. That's not even a fraction of what Google is being sued for. 2.5 decillion is an unfathomable amount of money. But as of the time of me recording this, the lawsuit has gone up and Google is now being sued for 20 decillion dollars. 20 decillion. To put that number into perspective, that is the amount of f**ks Google doesn't give. So who is the perpetrator? What madman the maniac thinks they have a claim to sue Google for 20 decillion dollars? Russia is trying to sue Google for 20 decillion dollars because of YouTube's ban on all pro-Kremlin media. This is no bullshit. The country of Russia is suing Google for 20 decillion dollars. Obviously, this is not an obtainable amount of money. Google isn't even worth close to a decillion dollars, and Russia is trying to sue them for 20 decillion. According to the article, Russia's 20 decillion dollar fine against Google is meant to be symbolic and states Google should not restrict the actions of our broadcasters. I don't think it's symbolic. I think it's a frivolous lawsuit because their feelings got hurt. Or Russia is just an idiot and overestimates how much a prosperous company makes in a capitalist society. There is no way on God's green earth this lawsuit could ever be paid. You could combine every dollar across the entire world that's ever been used in the history of our species and it wouldn't even come close to one decillion. I cannot stress how absurd this number is. Dr. Evil couldn't conjure up this amount. This is so beyond the realm of possibility and into lunacy, Rick Sanchez wouldn't be able to find a reality where this lawsuit was paid in full. Afro mentioned the lawsuit is over YouTube banning Russia media networks and accounts that associate with pro-Kremlin and the fines arise from Google's failure to comply with previous court orders mandating they reinstate these Russian media accounts on YouTube. The court warned Google that non-compliance would lead to compounding fines with no ceiling on the amounts, starting at 100,000 ruples daily and fines doubling every week until the channels are restored. So 20 decillion is the cheapest we're looking at right now and it's still doubling as I'm speaking. 
So theoretically, we're going to need to invent some new numbers if this keeps up just a month from now. Also, Russia, I can't help but ask, but aren't y'all a country that supports media censorship? Don't y'all maintain an iron grip on what gets shared and received within your country? Or is that all symbolic as well? You know, I just can't help but find it peculiar that for a country which advocates what makes a good leader is having complete control and dominance over the rights and free will of its people would suddenly abhor that ideology when it's implemented onto them under the rules and regulations of Google. Just an observation, I suppose. Symbolic, as Russia puts it. Just like this next statement on behalf of Google. Following that, the Miami Heat unveiled a statue to commemorate one of their greatest players of all time, Dwayne Wade. And the reception was lukewarm at best. The face Dwayne makes when he sees a statue is like when a high school athlete finds out they'll be receiving an award only for it to be a participation trophy. I haven't seen a lack of joy like this since my first high school party where the hostess forgets to stock up on alcohol. This reminds me of the Cristiano Ronaldo statue that was so dog shit, he tried to sue the sculptor who made it. I wouldn't be surprised if both statues were made by the same person. They look like they're in pain, like they got stuck in the loading screen. We'll be right back with more news, but first, let's take a look at our city of the day. Madison, Wisconsin. The Costco guys have gone viral after an interview with Jimmy Fallon turned into a meme. This includes, but not limited to, comparing them to a Pokemon evolution, a body language analysis, and Jimmy Fallon having the spa to disrespect the youngest, the Rizzler. Notice the Rizzler's facial expression at the end of the exchange. Rizzler is clearly bored of the conversation. However, as a strong leader should, he will let those below him do all the talking for him, allowing his words to hold more power when he finally does decide to open his mouth. It's okay though, because the Rizzler doesn't walk alone. I guarantee when that interview ended, he called up his boys back home to help him settle the score. Also, where are his parents? Like, don't get me wrong, it really looks like they came straight from the same evolution table, but there is no blood relation at all. Like, who just lets their kid go with some random adult they met at Costco on Jimmy Fallon? Like, was there really no way to incorporate them into the Costco cinematic universe? And our final story, people get famous online for all sorts of shenanigans. And in the case of one Latin American TikToker, that rise to fame came at the cost of deporting her ex-boyfriend after finding out he cheated on her. The truth is, I was thinking, I mean, this can't stay like this. I mean, I need revenge. I wanted revenge, the truth. And I was thinking, what can I do? Like all relationships, there were definitely some secrets that played a part in this breakup. One, he lied about his citizenship. And two, he cheated on her. So naturally, when she found out, she proceeded to kidnap and return him across the border. You know, just a totally normal response to finding out the person you're with is a complete piece of sh**. To be fair, I like Mexican soap operas as much as the next guy, but this might be too much drama for my taste. And to think, this whole thing could have been avoided if you just obliged by the phrase, don't get caught on misdemeanors when you're committing felonies. While the TikToker is thrilled to be rid of that dirtbag and obtain a pseudo career from the fiasco, another woman in America is crying right now as she lost another vote a week prior to the presidential election. Well, that pretty much wraps up all the interesting stories that went down in the last week or so. By the time of this upload, election day will have passed, and we may or may not know who the 47th president of the United States will be. Regardless of the outcome, we at GDM will continue to focus on the positives and report the craziest events life has to offer. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and comment down below and show your support for the channel. I'm Brian Phillips, and this has been The Goddamn News.